At the Dorchester, London, British and American aviation experts honor the men who made the first British jet plane possible. This is the first Whittle jet engine, which was building whilst Lord Trenchard's boys were winning the Battle of Britain. Next to veteran Tom Sopwith is Whittle. In the background, Carter, who designed the Gloucester plane. Whittle the engine, Carter the plane. That was the team that put us tops ten years ago. Here, too, is Chief of the Air Staff, Sir John Slessor. Now the man who made flying history in the days when men didn't know why a plane flew pays his tribute, Mr. Tom Sopwith. That the first flight by an aeroplane specially designed for a power unit substantially the same as we are using today is the actual aeroplane we have in this room tonight. And this aeroplane was only made possible by the empirical thought and the dogged determination of one man, Air Commodore Sir Frank Little. The silver replica of the original jet plane marks the occasion for Air Commodore Sir Frank Whittle, who, as a flight cadet at Cranwell, wrote a thesis out of which, in due time, the first jet engine was born. Here it is, alongside a sleek, powerful modern type. The principle is the same. The lead Whittle gave us made the Canberra possible, the world's finest light bomber, which America is now building for her own Air Force. Her performance shook American experts when squadron leader Callard took her to the States. As the Comet is the world's finest airliner, we haven't wasted the lead which Whittle and Carter gave us.